Oliver, Barclays has produced some fairly impressive first half results this morning and their share price has been performing pretty well compared with its peers. It doesn't really look like the sort of kind of results that would prompt one to fire the CEO, Anthony Jenkins, who's just been bulleted by John McFarlane, the new chairman. Yes, you're right. It does look strange given that the, the performance, as you say, has been pretty good. Uh, a 25% increase in profits is very nice. That's on the back of uh, cost cutting that Mr. Jenkins put in place. Capital ratio has increased nicely as well. It's now 11.1%, which is fairly strong for big universal banks like Barclays. So it's, it looks to be in the right kind of shape. And as you say, the share price has been outperforming over the past year. It's done better than almost all of its direct competitors, with the exception of UBS. So it does look odd that, that it's at this time they've fired the chief executive. Strange, strange though it may seem, but the one problem that still bugs Barclays is a rather lacklustre return on equity. It's, it's only just over half its cost of equity of 10.5% or what it puts at 10.5%. How, how can that be fixed, do we think? So that is, you're right, the, the big problem for Barclays is a very low return on equity, and it, it's got to get that up towards the, the cost of equity. Uh, John McFarlane, the new executive chairman, as you say, his plan is to do the same as before but quicker. And he's introduced a few new targets to try to do that. He's, he's promising to push the cost to income ratio from the sort of mid-70s down towards 50%. He's tweaked the dividend policy to give himself a little more flexibility, which is a good idea. And with that extra fl capital flexibility, maybe he will be able to sell down the non-core portfolio more quickly, which might involve taking a bit more of a capital hit. But still, it will get capital out of that being tied up in this non-core area. So he's making some tweaks which should push it all in the right direction. But still, there's a, there's a long way to go. The return on equity, it, it was a lot more in this half than it was in the same period last year. But it needs to keep putting in that kind of improvement for the next few years to get towards that 10.5% cost. But it quality. sounds those self-help measures will only get him part of the way. So he needs some fair following wind. And very often, that can come from the, the much loathed and much done down investment banking part of Barclays. But more broadly, what sort of person should Barclays be looking for to replace Anthony Jenkins and indeed now the current incumbent, John McFarlane? What sort of profile of a person? Is it another sort of tame person like we had at Aviva or is it some other kind of character? Well, I think that uh, he, he might be looking for something like he had at Aviva. Uh, there, uh, Mark Wilson, the guy he brought in, I'm not quite sure he's tame, but he's, he's certainly put in place the, the broad principles that McFarlane had already set out before he joined. And having set out principles here, McFarlane might well want a chief executive to come in and just put all that into practice, rather than somebody to come in grandly with a big strategic review. That said, it, Perhaps what Barclays needs is a bit more of a direction, a bit more of a this is the kind of a bank that, that we want to be. And the, the real example of that is UBS, which said a few years ago, this is the kind of bank we want to be, all about wealth management with a small investment bank at the side. Investors really bought into that. That's why it trades at a premium rating. I don't get that sort of strategic vision from Barclays at the moment, and I wonder if okay. that's the kind of thing the new chief executive has to bring. Thanks, Oliver. It sounds like it's time for real boldness if we're ever going to get that rating above book value. Thanks very much indeed.